Uh, good morning, I'm uh, Guy Lemoyne. I'm uh, from the Joint Research Center, same uh, institute as uh, Alan Bellward, who was here yesterday talking about the water layer. But I'm working in a group uh, in agriculture, and we have a focus on uh, eventually on uh, food security, but uh, basically uh, the remote sensing contribution to that. And um, what is really interesting is that uh, we are really uh, kick-starting an, an activity that seems new, but we actually tried it out some 20 years ago, uh, which is uh, crop area mapping. But it actually failed at that stage because uh, it was too costly, because we had to use commercial data, and uh, it was not actually fitting what we uh, required. And this is all going to change with uh, the Sentinel program. And I will focus a bit on that. So uh, really, this idea of back to the future is something very strong. It's one of the reasons I actually returned to agriculture last year, because I was working in some other fields, emergency uh, vessel detection, other stuff, always with uh, uh, Earth observation. But I decided to return to agriculture because I see this Sentinel future as really something that is revolutionary. Um, as you know, that uh, already mentioned several times, we have Sentinel 1A already in space since about a year. Uh, Sentinel 2 since about a week. Uh, first image is already available. Uh, we're going to get global coverage every 10 to 12 days. Um, there's going to be uh, uh, twins, twins for both of the systems next year, which uh, uh, will increase the repetition cycle to six days. So we're going to have six days uh, global coverage. And the real issue, of course, is, uh, is uh, data volume. We, uh, these systems are going to uh, eventually produce something like uh, uh, four terabytes uh, per day this year, but of course double that next year. And uh, what is really interesting, everything is available under uh, the similar feel, uh, free, uh, full free and open license as uh, as Landsat. So this is something which is for Europe is something very new and uh, the, they have uh, concentrated a lot on, on of course on the, on the hardware and, and, the, and the data flow but uh, we have in Europe a little bit of an issue now uh, about the handling of the data. So uh, what is interesting as well this is, uh, this is uh, uh, the whole program is actually uh, coordinated from uh, uh, by the European Union so it's not a uh, a space uh, uh, program. It's really something that is driven from the environmental perspective. Um, and I've already been working with this data uh, uh, since uh, about a year. And uh, it's really interesting to show that, uh, um, of course, in Google Earth uh, Engine, you can uh, do this combination of the, the various layers. So uh, this is really what we have uh, been used to uh, uh, until now. If you talk about people working in global food security assessment, uh, MODIS type data. So this is the sort of resolution you get. You get some mixed signal, of course. And we are now able to unmix this to the parcel level, of course, Landsat series. But we can also now add consistent series of SAR and they give us uh, the actual information that we need to delineate crops, uh, measure area, and, and eventually look at crop status and crop status change uh, over the seasons, over the years. And that's going to be something which is uh, um, globally um, possible globally, consistently. And uh, you, of course, uh, where you can uh, um, integrate open reference data, this is an example in the Netherlands where we have all the parcels every year declared by farmers in a digital open data set, about 800,000 uh, uh, vectors, which just uh, is a bit bigger than the, than the uh, feature table uh, that I can handle in, uh, in the Earth Engine. But also, for instance, in other parts of the world, and this is really the food security element. So, for instance, very recently we had to look in North Korea because there's a news about a drought there, and we were looking at the rice production there. And what's very interesting, in this SAR series, you can actually see uh, varying water levels. I hear the gong, okay. Anyway, so this is um, uh, all, uh, you know, leading to new approaches, new uh, data combinations. And if you want to uh, know more, I have, a, I have one a session in the ON conference, and I can talk about this uh, in more detail. But uh, the, the whole thing is about, uh, uh, you know, uh, scaling this up to operational use very, very soon. This is the, the late, the, the new uh, Sentinel-2 image. You probably have already seen one. Uh, 